Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this afternoon. My name is Adrian. Can, can you all hear me a little louder? Louder? OK. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the Sweet Corn Project as part of NOVIC. Um, and to talk about this project, I really need to start by talking about the people that are involved in it, um, because they're really the crucial, the crucial part of this project. Uh, the upper left, I have a picture of Mark Diffley, who uh, is an organic grower in Minnesota. He's been growing since the 70s there with his wife, Bettina. Um, he's the, really the inspiration for this project. Uh, on the upper right, I have a picture of John Navazio, who many of you probably know, um, the breeder at OSA, who's been intimately involved with this. Bill Tracy on the bottom left, who is uh, the sweet corn breeder at UW-Madison. And then Jared Zeister on the bottom right corner, who um, was also, also integral in starting this project and continues to be integral. And the way this project started was that Martin, uh, who has grown a whole variety of vegetables, but his real passion is sweet corn. And if you get him talking about sweet corn, it's like talking to a fine wine connoisseur. He can tell you every detail about every variety that has ever come out. And he was worried that his seed supply for the variety that he uh, called his workhorse was going to run out. And so he started to think about breeding a, a variety that had all the traits that he was looking for. So he's been longtime friends with John Navazio and got in touch with John. And John knew Bill Tracy through his work at UW. So John was able to connect Bill to Martin. And at that time, Jared was Bill's graduate student. Um, and Jared was able to get a small grant, actually before the NOVA grant, with OFRF to get this project going. And I had the very good fortune to be Jared's predecessor working on this project. Um, and I'm really grateful for all the participants. So what Martin was really looking for in, in the sweet corn, uh, sweet corn variety was one that had good cold germination, which is a big issue for sweet corn, uh, especially in the Midwest. Uh, farmers tend to plant about mid-May, but at that time of year, often the soil is still quite cold, which can cause a lot of problems. So he was looking for uh, a variety that would still pop out of the ground even with, with pretty cold soils. Um, he also wanted something that had good vigor once it got out of the ground, um, as well as good husk protection. And the husk protection is important because it covers the ear and can keep birds and other insects from getting into the, the ear. Um, natural disease resistance was important, and then of course, as with any vegetable, uh, eating quality was crucial. So he talked to Bill Tracy, and Bill Tracy said, well, I think I have a couple populations that might be a good starting point. Um, so he had developed two populations, actually, that came from uh, a double crosses from the hybrids that I have listed here. Each population is a double cross of four of those hybrids. Um, and one is slightly earlier than, than, the, than the early population, I should say, MDSEP is the early population, and then the, the late population has a little bit longer maturity. So they decided to use a process of recurrent selection to develop these populations. And the way re recurrent selection works, you can see the diagram I have listed here. You, you start here, with uh, your, the original population, which we consider cycle zero, um, and you plant this out in the field, um, and then you make selections, which is what I have in, in the rectangles here. And then the selections get recombined. Uh, we use a winter nursery, which I will talk about in a little bit. And then you plant out the next cycle the following season, and that process continues. Um, making selections, recombining what you've selected, and then growing out the population again. So this process started in 2008. Uh, we planted, well, I wasn't there actually, but Jerry planted 100 rows of each population up at the Gardens of Vegan Farm in Minnesota, where Martin is. And each row that was planted represents a single year from that starting population. Um, and then we go through and do selections, and from that first year, approximately 12 years or rows were selected to be recombined in the winter nursery. So in 
So this is some pictures of us doing selection, which is by far the, one of the best parts of this, this project. Um, we all come together in August for about half a day, half a day of um, going through the trial plot on Martin's farm. We, we bite every an ear or a few ears from every row that we planted and we evaluate it on a one to five scale with all these um, traits that I've listed here. We, well, the germination I've already um, evaluated. I come out about a month after the, the crop has been growing to look at the germination. But then during our evaluation in August, we evaluated for rust and smut resistance, which are two um, major diseases in sweet corn. We also evaluated for its hus, the husk protection, as well as the tip fill, which is how much the, the kernels fill out the whole ear of the cob. We look at the ear shape, and then most importantly, which is why we have to go through and bite test every row, we evaluate it for its sweetness and for its tenderness. Then after we've gone through and made these selections um, in August, I go back to the University of Wisconsin-Madison where we have a seed storage facility. And what I, have, what I have waiting there are all the seed from those original ears that we planted out in the field. So I go through and I find the, the ears that we've selected in our evaluation that didn't get planted. And then that is the seed that we use to make our recomb recombinations for our next cycle of selection. So after we've made our selections and I've gone back and I've picked, it, picked out the, the selections from the remnant seed, we send them to a winter nursery, which is um, one, of the, one of the real nice advantages of being able to have this collaboration with the farmer and the university. Um, we're able to send our seed to winter nurseries that we utilize in South America. And what this does is this gives us a jump start on um, being able to recombine the seeds so that the following summer we're able to directly plant another trial and make selections again. Without the use of the winter nursery, then this whole cycle would take two years because the following summer we would then have to do our recombination. But with the winter nursery, we save ourselves a year. And the way we recombine it in the winter nursery is that we set up um, the, tri or the, the nursery in, a, in paired rows. So what I'll do is I'll take the first row from the first year that we've selected, and that'll be in row one. Then the row right next to it will contain a mixture of all the other selections that we've made. So if we've made 12 selections, then the second row is going to have a mix of all the seed from those 11 years minus the one that's in the row next to it. And then those two rows are cross-pollinated by hand. And what that does is that enables us to make a new population in which all of the different selections have been recombined. So then when we plant it out again the next summer, we have a whole new population to start with, to, to work from, that's only combinations of what we really liked that, that previous summer. So right now, the breeding is still continuing. We're in our fourth cycle so of selection. We're in our fourth, the early in the late population. Um, We've been really excited. When I first started, the first year I, I participated in the evaluations, we'd walk through and the first year we'd take a bite, we'd all sort of spit it out, we'd keep walking, the next year we'd sort of spit it out, and maybe every 10 or so rows we'd come to one that said, we'd say, oh, this tastes pretty good, this has some potential. In this past summer, when we were out there evaluating, as we walked through every row that we took a bite from, we thought, oh, this is pretty good, and then we went to the next one and said, oh, this is even better. So we're really making a lot of progress, um, not just in the flavor, which is, again, crucial for, crucial for sweet corn and tricky to, to, um, to select for because it's, it tends to be a recessive trait. But in addition, we're making improvements on uh, the disease resistance, pus protection, and all, actually all of those traits that I, that I listed that we're trying to, to improve upon. Um, this coming summer in 2012, in addition, addition to continuing our recurrent selection, we're also going to be trying to improve the uniformity of the population because this is an open pollinated population that we're working on and um, it still has a lot of variability that we'd like to try to make a little bit more uniform so that it will be acceptable to farmers and growers. Um, and we're hopeful um, that in, we're hopeful we're hoping by 2019 we're going to be able to release 
um, at least one population um, of, of OP sweet corn. So uh, keep stay tuned and uh, keep your fingers crossed for us. Oh, okay. Just a question. I think we're. Yeah, I think we're. Well, if you want to do one. <laughs> no, I do one. Okay. Go ahead. Just curious Right. That's a good question. And the question he asked was, "What is our plan for release? Are we planning on keeping it locally within Minnesota or releasing it wider?" Um, and First, just to say that one of the hopes with the NOVIC project is that um, this population, although it's being selected in Minnesota, is being grown in all of the trials at all the different NOVIC sites. So that, that helps us get a sense of how it performs in environments outside of Minnesota. Um, and as far as the release, um, that's something that we're still trying to figure out the best way to do it. It really is something that's going to be um, a collaborative decision between Martin, the farmer, the breeders, um, and, and the most feasible way to do it. So we're hoping to make it widely available um, as far as exactly the process we're going to use for that. We haven't, we haven't quite sorted that out, but, but that is something that we are hoping to be able to do. Um, 